is the Emergency Medical Minute. Okay, Pharmacy Medical Minute. Um, so, um, some of you may have heard, kind of a recent um, article came out in the New England Journal of Medicine just a few days ago. Uh, they were comparing, looking at, for patients who go to IR from, for thrombectomy, looking at using tenecteplase as our IV option versus alteplase. Um, so, for those who don't know, tenecteplase is a, it's a genetically modified derivative of alteplase. The benefit is that it's more specific for fibrin and also has a longer half-life than alteplase does. So, um, when given, giving a TNK or tenecteplase, it's given as a bolus of 0.25 milligrams per kilo, and it does not need to be followed by a drip as compared to our standard dose of TPA. So they use the same inclusion and exclusion criteria. They looked at patients coming in or still in the window for TPA, still met all the same criteria, um, just using this dose of tenecteplase versus our regular alteplase dose. So their primary outcome was looking at uh, reperfusion of uh, greater than 50% of the involved area of ischemia or absence of a retrievable thrombus when they in the target vessel when they went in for the procedure. So if their clot if a clot was never identified, then they just looked at reperfusion one to two hours after the IV dose was given. Secondary outcomes, they also looked at uh, patient functionality 90 days after. And then they also looked at safety outcomes such as death and uh, intracranial hemorrhage. So it was a small study. There was only 202 patients, but they had on about 100 patients in each group. Um, the primary outcome of reperfusion actually occurred in 22% of the tenecteplase group versus 10% in the TPA group. And that was significant. Not only they tested to see if TNK was non-inferior to alteplase, they also tested to see if it was superior to alteplase. And they were able to find significance in both. So actually finding that it was superior for uh, reperfusion. In terms of functionality, the, there was better 90-day functionality over alteplase. And then symptomatic intracranial hemorrhage occurred in 1% in each group. Um, there was actually more deaths in the alteplase group, however, it wasn't considered statistically significant. So um, what this means for us is probably more studies to come looking at possibly changing our standard of care from using alteplase to TNK. Like I said, this was kind of a small study, just kind of get the wheels turning a little bit. I'm sure more will come from it, but um, if you start to hear about that, that's kind of where it's all coming from. So more to come in the future, I'm sure. Thank you. Emergency Medical Minute is, and always will be, about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.